Hi parents, um, my name is Megan and today I'm going to be sharing with you our positive home birth story of our second daughter and then later on in the video I'm just going to kind of go over my very minimalistic postpartum box that I had put together. So let's go ahead and just get started. <laughs> that I had a home birth with my first daughter almost two years ago and I'll go ahead and link below the video that um, we had put together from that so make sure you go ahead and check that out it's very um, emotional and you may also get some ideas um, for your birth story as well we will be having a video like that as well, but we are only 11 days out from having her. So, you know, as you know, photography and the videos take time to put together. So make sure you hit like and subscribe. So that way when we do upload that, you will be able to see that video as well. So moving on, um, our due date was February 4th and my daughter Amelia was born one week early. So I was really kind of banking on having this baby a week early as well. But after a couple of days of Braxton Hicks, February 2nd, I woke up around four o'clock having a contraction. And I was like, oh, nothing, you know, I'll just go back to sleep because it had been happening for days. So then again, it happened and again, and I'm like, wait a second, did I just have three right in a row? So I got out of bed, I went to the bathroom and I was like, I'm gonna look at the time and see how far apart they are. So when I looked, they were 10 minutes. So again, that doesn't mean anything. It could have been prodromal labor, which is where you have like surges a few days before labor because your body is preparing for labor. So I didn't really get too excited yet and I know that I needed to rest. So it was probably about six o'clock where I was like, I gotta get out of bed. Like the contractions were just getting very uncomfortable at that time. And I want, what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? You coming in with mommy? You wanna sit on mommy's lap? Yes. All right, come sit on mommy's lap. You're gonna be in my video? Whoa, you got the sun in your face. <laughs> here, sit up here maybe. Is that better? Your slipper fell off? Okay, better? Oh, that one fell off too? Okay. All right. You gonna sit and have mommy record the story? Yeah? Okay. Like, sit like a good girl? So it was about six o'clock. I got out of bed, and at this point, they were still every 10 minutes, but I could move through them, like, talk through them. Like, it wasn't very painful. But I was starting to get anxious because my midwife lives an hour away and, you know, they need to be notified of anything. So I had called her and just let her know, like, hey, listen, this is the situation. I'm not sure if it's going to turn into active labor or what's going to happen, but I just wanted to let you know. And she's like, okay, let me know if they start to get stronger and closer together. So, oh, so she said to really, she said to really focus on the of them getting closer. She said sometimes with a second baby they don't get as intense. So, I mean, I did everything. I ate breakfast started doing stuff around the house, took a shower, you know, anything to keep busy because they say the busier you are, it helps distract you from the actual surges and will actually make labor seem less shorter. What? Are you pulling mommy's hair? Ouchie. 
So this little girl sometimes will wake up in the morning and she still breastfeeds. So sometimes she'll wake up, she'll have some booby milk and then she'll go back to sleep sometimes. So she had woken up on February 2nd and wanted booby milk. And I was hesitant at first, but I'm like, no, because nipple stimulation, you know, acts as your natural bodies. Hey, can you stop pulling mommy's hair? That hurts, please. Okay. You're gonna go get daddy? Okay, go get daddy. All right, I'm back, sorry. Um, but where did I leave off? Um, so she still breastfeeds. She woke up around 8.30. Um, and I decided to go ahead and give her some booby milk. The nipple stimulation allows for your body's natural release of oxytocin, um, which can kickstart labor as well. So I wasn't expecting it, but probably about five minutes into her feeding, um, the contraction was like really intense to where I had to get her off of me. Um, and then after the contraction, she continued to feed for probably about another five minutes. And at that point I had another contraction and they had went from like a four to, uh, probably about an eight or a nine just from having her on my breast for five to 10 minutes. So at that point I notified the midwife again and, um, she said, you know what, it's, it, this sounds like it's labor. She's like, I'm going to get everything ready and we're going to head your way. So we contacted the photographer. The photographer was only 15 minutes away. She arrived. Um, and the only other person that we had intended on being here was my best friend um, for labor support for me, but also to help with Amelia. And everyone kind of got here right around 930 um at that point i was leaning over the couch contractions were every five minutes still pretty intense i had to you know work on my breathing and all of the labor practices i was trying to stay calm um i do remember with amelia i was leaning over the couch as well it seemed like a very comfortable position um, it also allows your pelvis to open to allow baby to get down where it needs to get to. So it was probably about two hours of me in that position. It seemed to really help. I was trying to stay hydrated. Um, something that was recommended to me was actually to put a comb in your hand and when you have your contraction, squeeze it so it deters you of the contraction but all of my contractions were very very low with my first daughter they were up more and i could like feel my whole stomach um during the contraction excuse me they were different this time very intense i also think what made the difference this time was i wasn't tired so with Amelia, labor started around seven o'clock at night and probably didn't even actually start active labor till probably three or four in the morning. So I was awake all night and then she wasn't born until um, 8.27 in the morning. So it was a very prolonged labor. Well, I shouldn't say prolonged, that's normal time for a first labor. <laughs> um, but I was very on at this time. I was very relaxed. And one thing I wanted to do was to move with the contractions. So I really focused on that. I was able to get in my zone. So I think having less people here was beneficial for me and the labor process. I wasn't pressured and I was able to relax in between contractions and focus on what I needed to do. And I could actually think clearly. Um, so after the midwife got here, she had asked if I wanted to be checked, but we had decided with our first pregnancy that we really weren't gonna do checks. Um, it's kind of like, yes, I wanna know, but no, I don't wanna know because it doesn't really matter. <laughs> 
So at that point we opted out and just kind of got the pool up to temperature and she recommended that I get into the pool. So at this time it was probably about 1030 when I got into the pool and instantly I like just felt so relaxed. I took me a couple of different positions to get comfortable but once I found that position in the pool I wanted to almost like fall asleep. I was that relaxed. <clears throat> I do think that it didn't slow down my contractions because they were still every five minutes, but it helped them not be as intense. So I was in the pool until she was born at 116. So that was about three hours in the pool. Um, the first two hours in the pool, it was just continuing to move through the contractions. Um, Continuing to drink water, continuing all of, you know, the methods that seem to work. I do feel bad my midwife. She was amazing. She basically sat in front of me the whole time, made eye contact with me, talked through each contraction with me. You know, she did not move that whole entire time. And I don't know how she did it. She didn't have to go to the bathroom, nothing to eat, nothing to drink. So they really are rock stars and they really are here to make sure that you have a great birth experience. So just throwing that out there, if you are considering to have a home birth versus a hospital birth, um, I definitely recommend you find a midwife and go talk to them. They will answer all of your questions and it's really an amazing experience. Anyways, so probably around 12-ish, 12.30-ish, I felt like I needed to start pushing. So at that point we started to push through the contractions and I feel like the first couple of pushes, I quote unquote like forgot how to push. Um, so probably after the couple, that's when they started to actively be real pushes and it seemed to help the contractions. So um, the midwife said that we I pushed for about an hour and all I can remember is because people were Amelia was here and people were asking me like how was she during your home birth and I said honestly I don't know I was so like in my own zone but people were telling me that she was coming up and kissing me and putting the washcloth on my forehead and rubbing my arm and just kind of being there for support, which I think is beautiful. Um, I wish I remembered all that, but um, to kind of get into the nitty gritty details, um, I feel like it is a little TMI, but it is kind of if you are a parent getting ready to have a baby like this is this is baby talk so um during the pushing when the baby got lower and was crowning you know you feel all that pressure down there and honestly it's not really pain the contractions are pain but when the baby is there it's all pressure so at that point you know i want i was really feeling the pushing her head came out and then I remember like with Amelia, my first daughter, it was like you feel the head come out and then you feel the shoulders come out and then the baby just kind of comes out. So it's like boop, boop and out. But this time it was like boom, 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 boom. But that was because Rosalie was born in her sack, which I guess is very rare, but means good luck. So... Amelia was pretty much almost born in her sack too. She was crowning. You could still see the sack that the water was, and my water never broke. But right before she came out, the water broke. So I think I must have really strong placentas or something. But um, I forget what I was just going to say. One thing, I was very happy to have my water birth this time. I definitely think there's pros and cons to each your own. Um, but one thing that they don't tell you about that I wasn't prepared for was like 
obviously when you push you poop like it's it's normal and you're sitting in that in the pool like the blood doesn't didn't bother me um or like you also like pee in the pool pee is sterile like it's not gonna do anything but it was just the fact that like my poop was in the pool and I was sitting in the pool no matter like that the midwives and everybody got that out um so yeah TMI but um, also be aware of that if you are considering to have a water birth. I was very thankful to shower once I could. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a really good experience. And I remember a lot of it where with Amelia's, I don't. It was very fast and intense. So moving on to after she was born, we didn't know the sex. So when she had come out... Um, obviously dad was not able to like really catch her this time, be, catch the baby because it was in the pool to where with Amelia, he actually caught Amelia and put Amelia up on my chest. But the midwife had to actually like break the water and get the baby out before putting the baby on my chest. So, you know, it was a moment of finding out the sex. So the baby was on my chest and I looked and it was a girl. I really thought it was a boy. Um, I don't want to say I'm disappointed, but I don't like to be wrong. And I really had a feeling it was a boy right from the beginning. Um, so that was a little discouraging. But you know what? Happy, um, healthy baby, healthy mama. Had the baby at home. Like, you, I can't complain. Very blessed to have two beautiful girls. Um, and then I wanted to get out of the water. So we got into the bed, you know, they do all the checks and the bleeding and all this. And this time in my birth plan, which I will go ahead and link that video too, because I did record a, um, a birth kit video for preparing for a home birth and kind of went over my birth plan as well. So make sure you check that out. And, um, I really wanted to focus on that golden hour this time because I feel like we didn't the first time and it is so important. So we did, we got into the bed, we dimmed the lights, um, kind of kicked everybody out and we had that one-on-one -on -one time with the baby, you know, got her feeding right away. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was pretty amazing and what our bodies can do the fact that we can even make another human being the fact that um you know like our body just does all these things naturally and they it knows what to do and it's crazy how as soon as you see your baby you forget about all that pain that you just went through so um, that is our birth story. I cannot wait to see the pictures and I cannot wait to put the video together. So please, like I said in the beginning, make sure you subscribe if that's something that interests you and make sure, you know, you'll get notified once we go ahead and get that uploaded. And I just want to go ahead and kind of briefly go over with you next the postpartum box. It's very minimalistic, but hopefully you can get some ideas. So let's go into the bathroom so I can show you. All right, I am in my bathroom and of course my cat just went to the bathroom so it smells. Ugh. Um, but we, I kind of like dissembled the box already because we used some things. Um, like I said, I'm 11 days postpartum, but I also donated some of the things to my midwife so that she can give it to other moms um, as well. So let me go ahead and turn the camera around and just kind of briefly talk to you about what was in my postpartum box. Also, you want to make sure you have, if you're going to breastfeed, like breastfeeding stuff. So, you know, if that's like a bra, um, shirts, you're going to want nursing pads. Um, I like the reusable ones. Um, if you don't plan on breastfeeding, you still need to have breastfeeding supplies. So you're going to want to make sure you have um, some doctors prescribe medication to dry up your milk. 
Um, you also like can do cabbage leaves, um, which I did do cabbage leaves for the engorgement and to help because it feels refreshing. Um, you can also use uh, Dr. Bronner's peppermint soap. So the peppermint, like you massage your boob with the peppermint and that also helps kind of dry up your milk. So you have to decide what you want, um, breastfeeding or not breastfeeding, and make sure you have things to aid in both of those as well. All right, so let me turn this around. Bella, are you going to say hi? <laughs> All right, so I'm currently actually wearing like a girdle type thing. Kind of just helps for support. Oh, what are you doing, Bella? <gasps> There's no baby in there anymore. <laughs> you want mommy love um but I also have like this goes around my hips and you can actually use it during pregnancy too which I did and I do usually have this on um and these are just a couple other ones that I had first time around as well I'll probably transition as I go um so these are a definite must um they kind of go up higher too, so like you don't have to buy actual underwear that give that support. Um, so this is a second box I have. I'm actually going to store, Bella, come on, store away for the next baby. And then actually, let me show you down here. I also use these. So I put the pads in. I like the period pads and not like the actual postpartum pads because they're so big and bulky. Um, so what I would do is I would actually add two of these into like the diaper. So that way I didn't have to change the diaper as frequent the first couple of days. I just changed the pads and I find it more comfortable. Um, and then this I had first time around. My sister had gotten me. It's just a... Uh, like Epsom salt bath to provide comfort for mama. Um, colace. I do the dye free colace. This I would recommend the first couple of days. I don't know about you, but it's like that first poop and that first pee after having a baby like is always nerve wracking. So this I took the first couple of days just to kind of make sure that I didn't have to push. Um, I'm going to my midwife actually gave this to us as a gift. She makes it herself. So it's bottom spray. But I also have um, the Earth's Mama's bottom spray too that I had used up first. I would definitely recommend some type of squirt bottle when you are peeing the first couple of days. Um, Frida mom has a whole line and like a whole kit that they put together for postpartum moms. And to be honest with you, I didn't tear both times. I didn't, um, I don't like, like the witch hazel pads and stuff like that. Like I'm very minimal. I, I'm, I mean, maybe if I do tear next time, like the ice packs and things like that would be beneficial. I just... Never used it the first time around, didn't use it the second time around, and didn't feel like storing it for the third time if I didn't even use it the other times. Um, and then ibuprofen. So one thing I was not prepared for this time around was the afterbirth pain. Um, was pretty intense. I did not have that with Amelia. I also had way less bleeding with Amelia. And I would definitely recommend you get after ease. Um, I wish I did. And I definitely will have it in my next postpartum box. So they say each baby, your afterbirth pains get in more intense, which makes sense if you think about it because your uterus has all that scar tissue. Um, so that's one thing I do recommend. I wish I had. So the afterbirth pains um, probably lasted for about three to four days. So every time Rosalie would eat, um, again, the nipple stimulation allowed like the contracting of the uterus down and it was so intense. Um, it was almost as if I was still in labor. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else postpartum that I used. It's kind of as, it's, I think that's it. <laughs>
if there's anything I did forget, I'll go ahead and just add it into the description below. But I do hope that you guys enjoyed listening to our birth story. And please make sure you stay tuned for that upcoming birth video. And thank you so much. Good luck to all you future mama and daddies out there. Or if this is your second time around, I hope this gave you some inspiration or some tips for your birth, whether that be in the hospital or home birth. And I wish you guys the best for a happy baby, healthy baby and ha healthy mama as well. And thank you so much. Bye. Hello, you don't